The moon moves around the earth in an orbit that is very nearly a circle. But circles are very special kinds of motion, and orbits don't necessarily have to be circles. Halley's Comet or Halley's Comet uh, is a, a comet which moves around the sun in an orbit which is a long and very pointy orbit, a long ellipse. For 75 years during its motion, it's out there somewhere in the dark, and then for a few um, months comes into view and then turns around and leaves again into the dark and is invisible for most of that 75 years. In order to get a thing to move in a circle, things have to be just right. Now, circular motion is an accelerated motion, and so it has to satisfy Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion says that the accelerations have to be equal to the force divided by the mass. But for things that go in circles, and just for things that go in circles, you can write the acceleration and figure out what the acceleration is by taking the speed squared divided by the radius of the circle. So if you know how fast it's going around that circle and you know the radius of the circle, you can figure out what the acceleration is that's being caused by the force that's accelerating it. If we uh, look at the equation and write it for circular motion, then the acceleration is the speed squared divided by the radius of the circle, and that must be equal to the force divided by the mass. Whenever you see things moving in circles, they must be satisfying this version of Newton's second law. Let me give you an example of this special kind of circular motion that I've been talking about. I have here a, uh, an air table. It's blowing little jets of air up uh, from the surface, uh, causing a force on the bottom of this puck. And of course, the puck has a weight, so there's a weight down, and there's the force of the air jets upward, causing two forces on this puck. But the puck is not accelerating up or down. It's just, as far as up or down is concerned, it's at rest. Consequently, we know that those two forces, the weight and the force exerted by the air jets, are balanced. So, for all practical purposes, we can ignore them. There's a third force on the puck, however, a force exerted by this tether, this string. This puck we can put into motion so that it can go in a circle, that special kind of circular motion uh, around this uh, post here. Now that's an accelerated motion. Circular motion is an accelerated motion. That's what things do when there's a force exerted on them. And the force exerted on the puck in this particular instance is a force exerted by the, by the string. Now let's put it into motion just kind of rather slowly. Let it go very gently around in a circular motion. Because it's moving in a circle, we know that it must be satisfying Newton's second law of motion for those things that are going in circles. So, for the thing going very, very slowly, we know that this equation is satisfied. Now let's come back and do it in a slightly different way. Let's make it go faster. The circle is still the same, the same radius of circle. The mass of the puck is still the same, but the speed is much larger this time as it goes in a circle. Now what does our equation say about motion in a circle at a very slow speed? If we look at our equation and the speed is very slow, then the side of our equation is very small. That means that the force causing that acceleration is very small. The force is the force exerted by the, spring, or by the string on the puck. Now what does our equation say if the motion of the puck in the circle is at a much faster speed? If we look at our equation, it says that the left-hand side with a very much larger speed now is much bigger than it was before when it was moving slower. But if the speed is larger on the left-hand side, then the force causing that acceleration must also be larger in order to keep the equation balanced. That means as the puck goes faster and faster and faster, the force exerted by the string must get larger and larger and larger. So can you imagine what would happen if we make the puck go faster and faster and faster 
around this circle of the same radius. As it goes faster and faster and faster, the force exerted by the string that is making it go in a circle, that is accelerating it, that force has to get bigger and bigger and bigger even as the puck goes faster and faster and faster. And can you imagine that eventually, going faster and faster and faster, the string will no longer be able to exert a significant enough force or a strong enough force to satisfy Newton's law for circular motion. At that point, the string has to break. And when the string breaks, then the motion will no longer be accelerated motion. From then on, or at least for a moment, it's going to be uniform motion. And when the string breaks, the puck will then move off in a straight line at constant speed until it hits something to exert another force on it.